Hi, I'm Susan Schalwer. I'm the curator here at George Washington's Mount Vernon, and I'm delighted to welcome you here to visit George Washington's house here along the banks of the Potomac. We're here especially today to look at what George Washington always called his new room. That's the large room at the north end of the house. Washington began adding it to the house in 1776 as he's actually away fighting the Revolutionary War. And it really becomes the show place of his house, the sort of uh, grand point, the finale of his tour for visitors. And so let's go inside and take a look at what's going on in there today. Now we're inside George Washington's new room, which he began adding to his Mount Vernon mansion in 1776. Uh, it's the north wing of the house added onto the central core of the house, which he had inherited or, or acquired from his half-brother Lawrence in the 1750s. And so it, it balances the south wing of the house, which he had begun adding in 1774-75. The south wing has a very practical function. It houses George and Martha Washington's bedchamber on the second floor, and on the first floor, George Washington's study and closet and his dressing area. And so that wing, which was a very private wing, had a very practical function. The north wing, this very large room, is a little bit um, puzzling to figure out what was its function in the 18th century. What did it mean to George Washington? Um, in, in some part, I think that um, its function wasn't as important perhaps as its form. It balanced, it made a symmetrical uh, arrangement of his house, which in 18th century architecture would be very important. But on the other hand, Washington was a very practical man, and it's hard to imagine him using up this amount of space unless he had a real reason for it. So I think as you look around the space, what really strikes you, particularly right now when we're restoring it and it doesn't have its furniture in it, it's just a grand space. It's a really impressive volume. Volume. It's about 23 uh, feet uh, wide, about 30 feet long, so it runs the full width of the house from the land side to the river side, and it's about 16 feet high, so it's a double height. Um, and that's really important, and if you think about coming from the smaller, sort of darker 18th century rooms, walking into this room with these big windows, the high ceiling, and especially the Palladian window at the north end of the house, which lets in this grand kind of artist's light and looks out over the locust grove that George Washington planted in 1776, and then looks out toward the river, and it's really almost an indoor or outdoor space. Um, it's an impressive room even by 21st century standards, but in 1775 in Virginia it was really unusual. We, we tell um, visitors as they're coming through this room, and it's really true that most Virginia houses at the time, probably 95% of the people living in Virginia, you could fit their whole house inside this room. That's how big it was for its time. And, and with this grand height, people would not have seen a room like this in a residential space, maybe in only two or three other houses in Virginia, like the governor's mansion this kind of space would be associated with a public space or a church. So what's George Washington thinking when he does this? Well, clearly he's influenced by looking at um, English architectural pattern books. That was a gentleman's occupation in the 18th century to kind of be your own semi-professional amateur architect. He's looking at those pattern books. Um, he's talking to other gentlemen that he knows or is in correspondence with. And architectural historians who have looked at the room have really agreed that the room is in the tradition of what in English country houses is called a double cube room. And so it's very geometric, basically twice as long as it is wide and, and double height as well. And all of these double cube rooms have this wonderful coved ceiling where the ceiling doesn't come to right angles, but it kind of curves up from the wall to the ceiling, which just kind of lifts the ceiling up in this very wonderful way and echoes the curve of the Palladian window um, in a really great way. 
And in England, those kinds of rooms were often called saloons, which we don't call this room a saloon now because, you know, in today's world, in the post-John Wayne world, you hear saloon, you think John Wayne, B. Westerns, Matt Dillon, you know, all that kind of thing. But, but it really meant um, a, a, an impressive, semi-public space for receiving people. And in the English country house tradition, which Washington is clearly looking at, you know, people are going on tours of the great English country houses as early as the mid 17th century. And, and people come to see Mount Vernon, in large part because George Washington is famous after the Revolutionary War, and they get taken on a tour, and this is clearly the high point of the tour. And, and today, because of the efforts of the Mount Vernon Ladies Association over the past century and a half, we can see uh, George Washington's new room much as he saw it. And, and that is the goal of the restoration project that we're undertaking now.